in order to provide you with a comprehensive grasp of the indictment filed within the Fulton County investigation involving the former president, Donald J. Trump, and multiple co-defendants, Caribbean Television Network and Zoom Haiti News have created a visual presentation encapsulating the entire indictment. With the exception of the table of contents and the enumeration of grand jurors, no modifications have been made to the original indictment document. The narration for this presentation has been generated utilizing AI software known as Natural Readers. The video production has been prepared by our esteemed team of producers at Caribbean Television Network. Count one of 41 the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do hereby charge and accuse Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Mark Randall Meadows, Kenneth John C. Isabro, Jeffrey Bossard Clark, Jenna Lynn Ellis, Ray Stalling Smith III, Robert David Cheeley, Michael A. Roman, David James Schaefer, Sean Micah Tresai E. R. Still, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, Trevian C. Cuddy, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton with the offense of violation of TIE Georgia RICO, Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations, ACT, OCGA Section 16-14-4, C, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the state of Georgia and county of Fulton. On and between the 4th day of November 2020 and the 15th day of September 2022, while associated with an enterprise unlawfully conspired and endeavored to conduct and participate in, directly and indirectly, such enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity in violation of OCGA Section 16-14-4b, as described below and incorporated by reference as if fully set forth herein, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Introduction. Defendant Donald John Trump lost the United States presidential election held on November 3, 2020. One of the states he lost was Georgia. Trump and the other defendants charged in this indictment refused to accept that Trump lost, and they knowingly and willfully joined a conspiracy to unlawfully change the outcome of the election in favor of Trump. That conspiracy contained a common plan and purpose to commit two or more acts of racketeering activity in Fulton County, Georgia, elsewhere in the state of Georgia, and in other states. The Enterprise At all times relevant to this count of the indictment, the defendants, as well as others not, named as defendants, unlawfully conspired and endeavored to conduct and participate in a criminal enterprise in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere. Defendants Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Mark Randall Meadows, Kenneth John, Casebro, Jeffrey Bossard Clark, Jenna Lynn Ellis, Ray Stalling Smith III, Robert David, Cheeley, Michael A. Roman, David James Schaefer, Sean Micah Tracer Still, Stephen Cliffgard, Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, Trevian C. Cuddy, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen. Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, Misty Hampton, unindicted co-conspirators Individual L. Through Individual 30, and others known and unknown to the grand jury, constituted a criminal organization whose members and associates engaged in various related criminal activities, including, but not limited to, false statements and writings, impersonating a public officer, forgery, filing false documents, influencing witnesses, computer theft, computer trespass, computer invasion of privacy, conspiracy to defraud the state, acts involving theft, and perjury. This criminal organization constituted an enterprise as that term is defined in OCGA. L6-14-3, 3, that is, a group of individuals associated in fact. The defendants and other members and associates of the enterprise had connections and relationships with one another and with the enterprise. The enterprise constituted an ongoing organization whose members and associates functioned as a continuing unit for a common purpose of achieving the objectives of the enterprise. The enterprise operated in Fulton County, Georgia, elsewhere in the state of Georgia. 
In other states, including, but not limited to, Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, and in the District of Columbia. The enterprise operated for a period of time sufficient to permit its members and associates to pursue its objectives. Manner and Methods of the Enterprise The manner and methods used by the defendants and other members and associates of the enterprise to further the goals of the enterprise and to achieve its purposes included, but were not limited to, the following. 1. False statements to and solicitation of state legislatures. Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, appeared at hearings in Fulton County, Georgia, before members of the Georgia General Assembly on December 3, 2020, December 10, 2020, and December 30, 2020. At these hearings, members of the enterprise made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020, presidential election. The the purpose of these false statements was to persuade Georgia legislators to reject lawful electoral votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia. Members of the enterprise corruptly solicited Georgia legislators instead to unlawfully appoint their own presidential electors for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald Trump. Members of the Enterprise also made false statements to state legislators during hearings and meetings in Arizona, Michigan, and Pennsylvania in November and December 2020 to persuade legislators in those states to unlawfully appoint their own presidential electors. 2. False statements to and solicitation of high-ranking state officials. Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, made false statements in Fulton County and elsewhere in the state of Georgia to Georgia officials, including the Governor, the Secretary C.F. State, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Members of the Enterprise also corruptly solicited Georgia officials, including the Secretary of State and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, to violate their oaths to the Georgia Constitution and to the United States Constitution by unlawfully changing the outcome of the November 3, 2020. 16. Presidential election in Georgia in favor of Donald Trump. Members of the enterprise also made false statements to and solicited state officials in Arizona, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. 3. Creation and distribution of false electoral college documents. Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, created false electoral college documents and recruited individuals to convene and cast false electoral college votes at the Georgia State Capitol in Fulton County on December 14, 2020. After the false electoral college votes were cast, members of the enterprise transmitted the votes to the president of the United States Senate, the Archivist of the United States, the Georgia Secretary of State, and the Chief Judge of the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia. The false documents were intended to disrupt and delay the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, in order to unlawfully change the outcome of the November 3, 2020, presidential election in favor of Donald Trump. Similar schemes were executed by members of the enterprise in Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. 4. Harassment and intimidation of Fulton County election worker Ruby Freeman. Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, falsely accused Fulton. County election worker Ruby Freeman of committing election crimes in Fulton County, Georgia. These false accusations were repeated to Georgia legislators and other Georgia officials in an effort to persuade them to unlawfully change the outcome of the November 3, 2020 presidential election in favor of Donald Trump. In furtherance of this scheme, members of the enterprise traveled from out of state to harass Freeman, intimidate her, and solicit her to falsely confess to election crimes that she did not commit. 5. Solicitation of high-ranking United States Department of Justice officials. Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, corruptly solicited high-ranking 
United States Department of Justice officials to make false statements to government. Officials in Fulton County, Georgia, including the governor, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and the President pro tempore of the Senate. In one instance, Donald Trump stated to the acting United States Attorney General, just say that the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. 6. Solicitation of the Vice President of the United States Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, corruptly solicited the Vice President of the United States to violate the United States Constitution and federal law by unlawfully rejecting electoral college votes cast in Fulton County, Georgia, by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia. Members of the enterprise also corruptly solicited the vice president to reject votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from several other states. 7. Unlawful breach of election equipment in Georgia and elsewhere. Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, corruptly conspired in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere to unlawfully access secure voting equipment and voter data. In Georgia, members of the enterprise stole data, including ballot images, voting equipment, software, and personal voter information. The stolen data was then distributed to other members of the enterprise, including members in other states. 18. 8. Obstructive acts in furtherance of the conspiracy and the cover-up. Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, filed false documents made false statements to government investigators, and committed perjury in judicial proceedings in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere in furtherance of and to cover up the conspiracy. 8. Obstructive acts in furtherance of the conspiracy and the cover-up. Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, filed false documents, made false statements to government investigators, and committed perjury in judicial Proceedings in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere in furtherance of and to cover up the conspiracy, acts of racketeering activity, and overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. As part of and on behalf of the criminal enterprise detailed above, the defendants and other members and associates of the enterprise committed overt acts to effect the objectives of the enterprise, including but not limited to Act 1. On or about the fourth day of November 2020, Donald John Trump made a nationally televised speech falsely declaring victory in the 2020 presidential election. Approximately four days earlier, on or about October 31, 2020, Donald John Trump discussed a draft speech with unindicted co-conspirator individual L, whose identity is known to the grand jury that falsely declared victory and falsely claimed voter fraud. The speech was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. On or about the 15th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani placed a telephone call to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 2, whose identity is known to the grand jury and left an approximately 83-second long voicemail message for Unindicted co-conspirator individual two making statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020, election in Fulton County, Georgia. This telephone call was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. On or about the 19th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis, Giuliani, Jenna Lynn Ellis, Sidney Catherine Powell, and unindicted co-conspirator. Individual 3, whose identity is known to the grand jury, appeared at a press conference at the Republican National Committee headquarters on behalf of Donald John. Trump and Donald J. Trump for President incorporated the Trump campaign and made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia and elsewhere. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. On or about the 20th day of November 2020, David James Schaefer sent an email to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury and other individuals. 
In the email, David James Schaefer stated that Scott Graham Hall, a Georgia bail bondsman, has been looking into the election on behalf of the president at the request of David Bossie and asked unindicted co-conspirator individual for to exchange contact information with Scott Graham Hall and to help him as needed. This was an overt act. In furtherance of the conspiracy. 20. Act 5. On or about the 20th day of November 2020, Donald John Trunip and Mark Randall Meadows met with Majority Leader of the Michigan Senate Michael Shirky, Speaker of the Michigan House of Representatives Lee Chatfield, and other Michigan legislators. In the Oval Office at the White House and Donald John Trump made false statements. Concerning Fiaud in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Michigan. Rudolph. William Louis Giuliani joined the meeting by telephone. This meeting was an overt act. In furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 6. On or about the 21st day of November 2020, Mark Randall Meadows sent a text message to United States Representative Scott Perry from Pennsylvania and stated, Can you send me the number for the Speaker and the leader of PA Legislature? POTUS wants to chat with them. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 7. On or about the 22nd day of November 2020, Donald John Trump and Rudolph William Louis Giuliani placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Arizona House of Representatives Russell Rusty Bowers. During the telephone call, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Arizona and solicited, requested, and importuned Bowers T-0 unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Arizona. Bowers declined and later testified to the United States House of Representatives Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol that he told Donald John Trump, I would not break my oath. The false statements and solicitations were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 8 on or about the 25th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis appeared, spoke, and presented witnesses at a meeting of Pennsylvania legislators in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. During the meeting, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Pennsylvania and solicited, requested, and importuned the Pennsylvania legislators present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. During the meeting, Jenna Lynn Ellis solicited, requested, and importuned the Pennsylvania legislators present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. Donald John Trump joined the meeting by telephone, made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Pennsylvania, and solicited, requested, and importuned the Pennsylvania legislators present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. 21 Act 9 on or about the 25th day of November 2020, immediately after the meeting of Pennsylvania legislators in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, where Rudolph William Louis Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis appeared, spoke, and presented witnesses, Donald John Trump invited a group of the Pennsylvania legislators and others to meet with him at the White House. Later that day, Donald John Trump, Mark Randall Meadows, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, Jenna Lynn Ellis and unindicted co-conspirators Individual 5 and Individual 6, whose identities are known to the grand jury, met with the group of Pennsylvania legislators at the White House and discussed holding a special session of the Pennsylvania General Assembly. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 10 on or about the 26th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives Brian Cutler and left Cutler a voicemail message for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning him to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 11 on or about the 26th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis. Giuliani placed a telephone call to President Pro Tempore of the Pennsylvania Senate Jacob. 
Jake Corman for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning Corman to unlawfully appoint presidential electors Fiam, Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 12. On or about the 27th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis. Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Pennsylvania. House of Representatives Brian Cudler and left Cudler a voicemail message for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning him to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 12. On or about the 27th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis. Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis placed a telephone call to President Pro Tempore of the Pennsylvania Senate Jake Corman for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning Corman to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. 22. Act L4. On or about the 27th day of November 2020, Donald John Trump placed a Telephone call to President Pro Tempore of the Pennsylvania Senate Jake Corman for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning Corman to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 15. On or about the 28th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis. Giuliani placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Brian Cutler and left Cutler a voicemail message for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning him to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 16. On or about the 29th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis. Giuliani placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Brian Cutler and left Cutler a voicemail message for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning him to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 17. One on or about the 30th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis. Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis appeared, spoke, and presented witnesses at a meeting of Arizona legislators in Phoenix, Arizona. Unindicted co-conspirators Individual 5 and Individual 6, whose identities are known to the grand jury, were also present. During the meeting, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud. In the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Arizona and solicited, requested, and importuned the Arizona legislators present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Arizona. During the meeting, Jenna Lynn Ellis solicited, requested, and importuned the Arizona legislators present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Arizona. Donald J. O. I. N. Trump joined the meeting by telephone and made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Arizona. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 21. On or about the second day of December 2020, Rudolph William Lewis. Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis appeared, spoke, and presented witnesses at a meeting of the Michigan House of Representatives Oversight Committee. During the meeting, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Michigan and solicited, requested, and importuned. The Michigan legislators present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Michigan. During the meeting, Jenna Lynn Ellis solicited, requested, and importuned the Michigan legislators present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Michigan. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 22. On or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be 
tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump, Georgia hearings now on at OANN. Amazing. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. 24. LACI. On or about the third day of December 2020, Rudolph William Lewis. Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Jenna Lynn Ellis, and Ray Stallings. Smith III committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath. By public officer, in violation of OCGA sections 16-47 and 16-10-1 in Fulton County. Georgia, by unlawfully soliciting, requesting, and importuning certain public officers then. Serving as elected members of the Georgia Senate and present at a Senate Judiciary. Subcommittee meeting, including unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is Known to the grand jury, Senators Lee Anderson, Brandon Beach, Matt Brass, Greg Dolezal, Steve Gooch, Tyler Harper, Bill Heath, Jen Jordan, John F. Kennedy, William Legon, Elena, Parent, Michael Rett, Cardin Summers, and Blake Tillery to engage in conduct constituting the Felony Offense of Violation of Oath by Public Officer, OCGA Section 1610-1, by Unlawfully Appointing presidential electors from Georgia in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said persons as prescribed by law with intent that said persons engage in said conduct. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 24. On or about the third day of December 2020, Rudolph William Lewis. Giuliani committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in Violation of OCGA October 16, 20, in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting. 1. That at least 96,600 mail and ballots were counted in the November 3, 2020, presidential Election in Georgia, despite there being no record of those ballots having been returned to a county elections office. 2. That Dominion voting systems equipment used in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Antrim County, Michigan, mistakenly recorded 6,000 votes for Joseph R. Biden when the votes were actually cast for Donald John Trump. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County, and City Law Enforcement Agencies. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16, 14 to 3, 5, A, 22, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 25. On or about the third day of December 2020, Ray Stallings Smith III committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of OCGA October 16, 20, in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting, L. That 2,506 felons voted illegally in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia, Two, that 66,248 underage people illegally registered to vote before their 17th birthday prior to the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. 3. That at least 2,423 people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia who were not listed as registered to vote. 4. That 1,043 people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia who had illegally registered to vote using a post office box. 5. That 10,315 or more dead people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. 6. That Fulton County election workers at State Farm Marina ordered poll watchers and members of the media to leave the tabulation area on the night of November 3, 2020, and continued to operate after ordering everyone to leave, said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government, and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies. 
This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA L6 L4-3 5A 22 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 26. On or about the third day 0F December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at RealDonaldTrump. Wow. Blockbuster testimony taking place right now in Georgia. Ballot stuffing by Dems when Republicans were forced to leave the large counting room. Plenty more coming, but this alone leads to an easy win of the state. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 27. On or about the third day 0F December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump. People in Georgia got caught cold bringing in massive numbers of ballots and putting them in voting machines. Great job at Brian Kim GA. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 28. On or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump met with Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives Brian Cutler in the Oval Office at the White House and discussed holding a special session of the Pennsylvania General Assembly. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 29. On or between the 3rd day of December 2020 and the 26th day of December 2020, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani placed a telephone call to President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate Cecil Terrell Butch Miller for the purpose of making false statements. Concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia, this was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 30. On or between the 3rd day of December 2020 and the 26th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate Butch Miller. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 31. On or about the 5th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to Georgia Governor Brian Kemp and solicited, requested, and importuned Kemp to call a special session of the Georgia General Assembly. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 32. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump. Gee, what a surprise. Has anyone informed the so-called says he has no power to do anything? Governor at Brian Kemp GA and his Puppet Lieutenant Governor at Jeff Duncan GA that they could easily solve this mess and win. Signature verification and call a special session. So easy, https colon slash slash t.co slash 5cb4qdepu. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 33. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, Sidney Catherine Powell entered into a written engagement agreement with Sullivan Strickler LLC, a forensic data firm located in Fulton County, Georgia, for the performance of computer forensic collections and analytics on Dominion Voting Systems equipment in Michigan and elsewhere. The unlawful breach of election equipment in Coffee County, Georgia, was subsequently performed under this agreement. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 34. On or about the 6th day 0F December 2020, Robert David Cheeley sent an email to John Charles Eastman, unindicted co-conspirator individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury and Georgia Senator Brandon Beach that stated, I am working on setting up a call for you with the Speaker and the President pro tempore tomorrow. I am also making the leadership aware of the importance for Trump electors to meet on December L4. Please provide the citation to the requirements of the duties which they must comply with. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 35. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, John Charles Eastman sent an e-mail to Robert David Cheeley, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury and Georgia Senator Brandon Beach that stated that the Trump 
presidential elector nominees in Georgia needed to meet on December L4, 2020, signed six sets of certificates of vote and mail them to the President of the Senate and to other officials. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 36 On or about the 6th day 0F December 2020, Robert David Cheeley sent an email to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 2, whose identity is known to the grand jury, that stated he had been speaking with John Charles Eastman and was attempting to set up a Call with Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives David Ralston and President Pro. Temporary of the Georgia Senate Butch Miller to encourage them to call a special session of the Georgia General Assembly. In the email, Robert David Cheely stated, Professor, Eastman told me tonight that it is critical that the 16 electors for President Trump meet next Monday and vote in accordance with 3 U.S.C. Section 7. In the email, Robert David, Chile further stated, I assume you can make sure this happens. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 37. On or about the seventh day of December 2020, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 2, whose identity is known to the grand jury, sent an email to Robert David Chile and David James Schaefer that stated, Bob, can you get on a call with David Schaefer, State GOP? Chair and I later this morning to discuss. David has been on top of a lot of efforts in the state. I get off of a board call around 1030. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 38. On or about the seventh day of December 2020, Rudolph William Lewis. Giuliani caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Rudy Giuliani to retweet of. Unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury, that stated, Georgia Patriot called to action. Today is the day we need you to call your state senate and house. Reps and ask them T-0 sign the petition for a special session. We must have free and fair elections in. GA and this is our only path to ensuring every legal vote is counted. At real Donald Trump. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 39. On or about the 7th day 0F December 2020, John Charles Eastman sent an email to Rudolph William Louis Giuliani with an attached memorandum titled The Real Deadline for Settling a State's Electoral Votes. The body of the email stated, Here's the memo we discussed. The memorandum was written by Kenneth John Casebro too. James Earl Troopies, an atomy associated with the Trump campaign and advocates for the position that Trump presidential elector nominees in Wisconsin should meet and cast electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Wisconsin. This email was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 40. On or about the 7th day 0F December 2020, Donald John Trump requested that Bill White, an individual associated with the Trump campaign then residing in Fulton County, Georgia, provide him with certain information, including contact information for majority. Leader of the Georgia Senate Mike Dugan and President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate. Butch Miller. The following day, White sent an email containing the requested information to Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 5, whose identity is known to the grand jury and others. This request was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 41. On or about the 7th day 0F December 2020, Rudolph William Lewis. Giuliani placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives David Ralston and discussed holding a special session of the Georgia General Assembly. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 42. On or about the seventh day of December 2020, Donald John Trump committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer in 
violation of OCGA sections 16-4-7 and 16-10-1 in Fulton County, Georgia, by unlawfully soliciting, requesting, and importuning Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives David Ralston, a public officer, to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by Public Officer, OCGA Section 1610-1, by calling a special session of the Georgia General Assembly for the purpose of unlawfully appointing presidential electors from Georgia in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said person as prescribed by law with intent. That said person engage in said conduct. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 43 on or about the 8th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr for the purpose of making false statements. Concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia and elsewhere. During the telephone call, Donald John Trump asked Carr not to discourage other state. Attorneys General from joining a federal lawsuit filed by the state of Texas contesting the Administration of the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 44. On or about the 8th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump and John Charles Eastman placed a telephone call to Republican National Committee. Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel to request her assistance gathering certain individuals to meet and Cast electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, in certain states. Despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020, presidential election. In those states, this was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 45. On or about the 8th day of December 2020, Michael A. Roman sent a text. Message to unindicted co-conspirator one individual four, whose identity is known to the grand jury, stated that he had spoken to Misty Hampton and asked unindicted co-conspirator individual four to get Misty Hampton to attend the hearing before the Georgia House of Representatives Governmental Affairs Committee on December 10, 2020. This was an overt act. In furtherance of the conspiracy, Act 46. On or about the 9th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Casebro wrote a memorandum titled Statutory Requirements for December 14th Electoral Votes to James R. Troopies, an attorney associated with the Trump campaign. The memorandum provides detailed state-specific instructions for how trying presidential elector nominees in Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin would meet and cast electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December L4, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020, presidential election in those states. This was an overt act. In furtherance of the conspiracy, Act 47, on or about the 10th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Casebro sent in. Email to Georgia Republican Party Chairman David James Schaefer and unindicted co-conspirator. Individual 9, whose identity is known to the grand jury. Kenneth John. Casebro stated in the email that certain individuals associated with the Trump campaign asked him to help coordinate with the other five contested states to help with logistics of the electors in other states hopefully joining and casting their votes on Monday. This was an overt. Act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 48. On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Casebro sent an email with attached documents to David James Schaefer and unindicted co-conspirators. Individual 9, Individual 10, and Individual 11, whose identities are known to the grand jury. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia for the purpose of Casting electoral votes for Donald John TRUW on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. 
Act 49. On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Kasebrov sent in email with attached documents to Arizona Republican Party Executive Director Greg Safson and others. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in Arizona for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020. Despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Arizona, this was an overt act in flutterance of the conspiracy. Act 50. On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Kasebro sent in email to Republican Party of Wisconsin Chairman Brian Schimming with proposed language for documents to be used by truant presidential elector nominees in Wisconsin for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Wisconsin. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 51. On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Kasebro sent in email to Nevada Republican Party Vice Chairman Jaron DeGraffin Reed. Kenneth John Kasebro stated in the email that Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani and other individuals associated with the Trump campaign asked him to reach out to you and the other Nevada electors to run point on the plan to have all Trump Pence electors in all six contested states meet and transmit their votes to Congress on Monday, December 14th. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. I. Act 52. On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Kasebro sent in email with attached documents to Jim DeGraffin Reed. The documents were to be used by Trump. Presidential elector nominees in Nevada for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald. John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost. The November 3, 2020, presidential election in Nevada. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 52. On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Kasebro sent in email with attached documents to Republican Party of Pennsylvania General Counsel Thomas W. King III. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in Pennsylvania for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 54. On or between the 10th day of December 2020 and the 14th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer contacted unindicted co-conspirator Individual 2, whose identity is known to the grand jury by telephone and discussed unindicted co-conspirator Individual 2's attendance at the December 14th 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 55. On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Rudolph William Lewis, Giuliani and Ray Stalling Smith III committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer and violation of OCGA Section 16-4-7 and 16-10-1 in Fulton County, Georgia, by unlawfully soliciting, requesting, and importuning certain public officers then serving as elected members of the Georgia House of Representatives and present at a House Governmental Affairs Committee meeting, including Representatives Shaw Blackman, John Burns, Barry Fleming, Todd Jones, Bean Gwynn, Mary, Margaret Oliver, Alan Powell, Renita Shannon, Robert Trammell, Scott Turner, and Bruce Williamson to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by public. Officer, OCGA Section 16-10-1 by unlawfully appointing presidential electors from Georgia in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said persons as prescribed by law 
with intent that said persons engage in said conduct. This was an overt act in furtherance of the Conspiracy Act 56 On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in Violation of OCGA October 16, 20, in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia House Zero F representatives present at a House Governmental Affairs Committee. Meeting 1. That it is quite clear from the State Farm Marina video from November 3, 2020, that Fulton County election workers were stealing votes and that Georgia officials were covering up a crime in plain sight. That at State Farm Marina on November 3, 2020, Democratic officials got rid of all of the reporters, all the observers, anyone that couldn't be trusted, used the excuse of a water main break, cleared out the voting area, and then went about their dirty, crooked business. 2. That between 12,000 and 24,000 ballots were illegally counted by Fulton County election. Workers at State Farm Marina on November 3, 2020. 3. That in Michigan, there were 700,000 more ballots counted than were sent out to voters. In the November 3, 2020, presidential election, which was accounted for by quadruple. Counting ballots. 4A. That Ruby Freeman, Shea Moss, and an unidentified man were quite obviously surreptitiously passing around USB ports as if they're vials of heroin or cocaine at state. Farm Marina is to be used to infiltrate the crooked Dominion voting machines. 5. That 96,600 mail-in ballots were counted in the November 3, 2020 presidential election. In Georgia, despite there being no record of those ballots having been returned to A. County Elections Office. 6. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16. 14 to 3, 5, A, 22, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 57. On or about the 11th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer reserved room. 216 at the Georgia State Capitol in Fulton County, Georgia, for the December 14, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. This was an overt act in. Furtherance of the Conspiracy Act 58 On or about the 11th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Casebro sent an email to Jim DeGraffen Reed and stated that the purpose of having the electoral votes sent into Congress is to provide the opportunity to debate the election irregularities in Congress and to keep alive the possibility that the votes could be flipped to Trump. This was an overt act in Furtherance of the Conspiracy Act 59 On or about the 11th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Casebro sent an email with attached documents to Greg Safson and others. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in Arizona for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Arizona. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 60. On or about the 11th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Casebro sent an email with attached documents to Michael A. Roman and other individuals associated with the Trump campaign. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector. Nominees in Nevada for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Nevada. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 61. 
on or about the 11th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Kasebrov sent in. Email with attached documents to Michael A. Roman, unindicted co-conspirator. Individual 5, whose identity is known to the grand jury and others. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 62. On or about the 12th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer contacted unindicted co-conspirator individual 12, whose identity is known T0 the grand jury, and discussed unindicted co-conspirator individual 12's attendance at the December 14, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. This was an overt act. In furtherance of the conspiracy, Act 63, on or about the 12th day of December 2020, Michael A. Roman sent an email to unindicted co-conspirators Individual 4 and Individual 7, whose identities are known to the grand jury and other individuals associated with the Trump campaign. In the email, Michael A. Roman stated, I need a tracker for the electors and instructed individuals associated with the Trump campaign to populate entries on a shared spreadsheet listing Trump. Presidential elector nominees in Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. The entries on the spreadsheet included contact information for the Trump. Presidential elector nominees, whether the Trump presidential elector nominees had been contacted and whether the Trump presidential elector nominees had confirmed that they would Attend the December L4, 2020, meetings of Trump presidential elector nominees in their respective states, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020, presidential election in those states. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 64. On or about the 12th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Casebro met with Brian Schimming and discussed the December L4, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Wisconsin. Rudolph William Louis Giuliani joined the meeting by telephone and stated that the media should not be notified of the December 14, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Wisconsin. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Al 65. On or about the 12th day of December 2020, Michael A. Roman instructed an individual associated with the Trump campaign to distribute certain information related to the December 14, 2020, meetings of Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin to unindicted co-conspirator. Individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury and to other individuals associated with the Trump campaign. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. L. On or about the 12th day of December 2020, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury, sent an email to Michael A. Roman and David James Schaefer with updates on the progress of organizing the December 14, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. The email stated, which elector nominees had confirmed they would attend the meeting that other individuals had been secured in case some of the elector nominees refused to participate in the meeting that Georgia legislators had been contacted to ensure access to the Georgia Capitol and that David James Schaefer had reserved room 216 for the meeting. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 67. On or about the 12th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer sent an email to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury, advising them to touch base with each of the Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia in advance of the December 14, 
2020, meeting to confirm their attendance. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 68. On or about the 12th day of December 2020, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury, sent a text message with contact information for unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury, and Georgia. Senator Brandon Beach to Michael A. Roman for the purpose of providing the contact. Information to Rudolph William Louis Giuliani. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 69. On or about the 13th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Casebro sent an email with attached documents to Michael A. Roman. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in New Mexico for the purpose of casting electoral votes. For Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020, presidential election in New Mexico. This was an overt act. In furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 70. On or about the 13th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Casebro sent in. Email to Rudolph William Louis Giuliani with the subject privileged and confidential brief notes on President of the Senate strategy. In the email, Kenneth John Casebro outlined multiple strategies for disrupting and delaying the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states. In the email, Kenneth John Casebro stated that the strategies outlined by him were preferable to allowing the Electoral Count Act to operate by its terms. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Al 71. On or about the 13th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Casebro sent an email with attached documents to Michael A. Roman and unindicted co conspirator. Individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December L4, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 72. On or about the 13th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Casebro sent an email to Michael A. Roman and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury, and stated that Rudolph William Louis Giuliani wants to keep this quiet until after all the voting is done, in reference to the December 14, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 73. On or about the 13th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer sent a text. Message to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury, and stated that unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand, Jury would attend the December 14, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, in the place of a Trump presidential elector nominee who refused to participate in the meeting. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 74. On or about the 13th day of December 2020, unindicted co conspirator Individual 9 whose identity is known to the grand jury, sent a text message to David James Schaefer and confirmed that he and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 13, whose identity is known to the grand jury, would attend the December 14, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector. Nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 75. On or about the 14th day 0F December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump, what a fool governor at Brian Kim GA 
of Georgia is. Could have been so easy, but now we have to do it the hard way. Demand this. Clown call a special session and open up signature verification now. Otherwise, could be a bad. Day for two great senators on January 5th. This was an overt act in furtherance of the Conspiracy Act 76 On zero hour about the 14th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer sent a text. Message to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury. That stated, listen. Tell them to go straight to room 216 to avoid drawing attention to what we are doing in reference to the December 14, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector. Nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 77. On or about the 14th day 0F December 2020, Michael A. Roman sent an email to unindicted co-conspirators Individual 4 and Individual 7, whose identities are known to the grand jury, and stated, please send me an update as soon as the state electoral college has adjourned and all paperwork is secured. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 78. On zero or about the 14th day 0F December 2020, Ray Stalling Smith III and David James Schaefer encouraged certain individuals present at the December 14, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, to sign the document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 Electors from Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 79. On or about the 14th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer, Sean, Micah Tresher Still, Kathleen Alston Latham, and unindicted co-conspirators. Individual 2, Individual 8, Individual 9, Individual 10, Individual LL, Individual 12, Individual 13, Individual L4, Individual 15, Individual 16, Individual L7, Individual 18, and Individual 19, whose identities are known to the grand jury, committed the felony offense of impersonating a public officer in violation of OCGA October 16, 23, in Fulton. County, Georgia, by unlawfully falsely holding themselves out as the duly elected and qualified. Presidential electors FIAM the state of Georgia, public officers, with intent to mislead the President of the United States Senate, the Archivist of the United States, the Georgia Secretary of State, and the Chief Judge of the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia into believing that they actually were such officers by placing in the United States mail to said persons a document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 Electors from Georgia. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16-14-3-5-A-23 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 80 on or about the 14th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer, Sean, Micah Tresher Still, Kathleen Alston Latham, and unindicted co-conspirators. Individual 2, Individual 8, Individual 9, Individual 10, Individual LL, Individual 12, Individual L3, Individual L4, Individual 15, Individual 16, Individual L7, Individual L8, and Individual 19, whose identities are known to the grand jury, committed the felony offense of forgery in the first degree in violation of OCGA Section 16-9-1B in Fulton County, Georgia, by, with the intent to defraud, knowingly making a document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 Electors from Georgia, a writing other than a check, in such manner that the writing is made purports to have been made by Authority of the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from the state of Georgia, who did not give such authority and uttered and delivered said document to the archivist of the United States. 
This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614-3, 5A, 16, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 81. On or about the 14th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer, Sean, Micah Tresher Still, Kathleen Alston Latham, and unindicted co-conspirators. Individual 2, Individual 8, Individual 9, Individual 10, Individual LL, Individual 12. Individual 13, Individual 14, Individual 15, Individual L6, Individual 17, Individual 18, and Individual 19, whose identities are known to the grand jury, committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of OCGA October 16, 20, in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making and using a false document. Titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 Electors from Georgia, with Knowledge that said document contained the false statement, we, the undersigned. Being the duly elected and qualified electors for President and Vice President of the United States of America from the State of Georgia, do hereby certify the following, said document. Being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Office of the Governor of Georgia, Departments and Agencies of State Government. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16-14-3, 5A, 22, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. 14 Lou. On or about the 14th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer, Sean, Micah Tresher Still, Kathleen Alston Latham, and unindicted co-conspirators. Individual 2, Individual 8, Individual 9, Individual 10, Individual LL, Individual 12. Individual 13, Individual 14, Individual 15, Individual L6, Individual L7, Individual 18, and Individual L9, whose identities are known to the grand jury, attempted to commit the felony. Offense of filing false documents in violation of OCGA Section 16-10-20.1b1 in Fulton County, Georgia, by placing in the United States mail a document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 Electors from Georgia, addressed to Chief Judge. U.S. District Court, Northern District of Georgia, 2188 Richard D. Russell Federal Office. Building in U.S. Courthouse, 75, Ted Turner Drive, SW, Atlanta, Georgia, 30303, with intent to knowingly file, enter, and record said document in a court of the United States, having reason to know that said document contained the materially false statement, we, the undersigned. Being the duly elected and qualified electors for President and Vice President of the United States of America from the State of Georgia do hereby certify the following. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16-14-3, 5A, 22, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 83. On or about the 14th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer and Sean Micah Tresher still committed the felony offense of forgery in the first degree in violation of OCGA Section 1691B in Fulton County, Georgia, by, with the intent to defraud, knowingly making a document titled Re, Notice of Filling of Electoral College vacancy, a writing other than a check, in such manner that the writing is made purports to have been made by the authority of the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from the state of Georgia, who did not give such authority, and uttered and delivered said document to the archivist of the United States. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16-14. 3, 5, A, 16, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 84. On or about the 14th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer and Sean. Micah Tresher still committed the felony offense of false statements and 
Writings, in violation of OCGA October 16, 20, in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making and using a false document titled RE, Notice of Filling of Electoral College Vacancy, with knowledge that said document contained the false statements. That David James Schaefer was chairman of the 2020 Georgia Electoral College meeting. And Sean Micah Tresher still was secretary of the 2020 Georgia Electoral College. Meeting, said document being within the jurisdiction of the office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the office of the Governor of Georgia, departments and agencies of state government. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA L6L4-3, 5A, 22, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 85. On or about the 14th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer instructed unindicted co-conspirator individual 15, whose identity is known to the grand jury, to deliver to the office of the governor of Georgia a document signed by David James Schaefer and Sean Micah Tresher still titled RE, Notice of Filling of Electoral College. Vacancy. The document contained multiple false statements. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 86. On or about the 14th day of December 2020, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury, sent an email to Michael A. Roman. Unindicted co-conspirator Individual 7, whose identity is known to the grand jury and others. That stated, all votes cast, paperwork complete, being mailed now. Ran pretty smoothly in reference to the December 14, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 87. On or about the 14th day of December 2020, Stephen Cliffgard Lee attempted to commit the felony offense of influencing witnesses in violation of OCGA Section 16. 10-93-B-1-A in Fulton County, Georgia, by traveling to the home of Ruby Freeman, a Fulton County, Georgia, election worker, and speaking to her neighbor with intent to knowingly engage in misleading conduct toward Ruby Freeman by purporting to offer her help and with intent to influence her testimony in an official proceeding in Fulton County, Georgia, concerning events. At State Farm Arena in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. This was an act of racketeering activity pursuant to OCGA Section 1614.3.5A.27 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 88. On or about the 15th day of December 2020, Stephen Cliffgard Lee attempted to commit the felony offense of influencing witnesses in violation of OCGA Section 16. 10-93-B-1-A in Fulton County, Georgia, by traveling to the home of Ruby Freeman, a Fulton County, Georgia, election worker, and knocking on her door with intent to knowingly engage in misleading conduct toward Ruby Freeman by purporting to offer her help and with intent T-0. Influence her testimony in an official proceeding in Fulton County, Georgia, concerning events. At State Farm Arena in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. This was an act of racketeering activity pursuant to OCGA Section 16-14-3-5-A-27 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 89. On or between the 15th day of December 2020 and the 4th day of January 2021, Stephen Cliffgard Lee solicited Harrison William Prescott Floyd, an individual associated with the organization Black Voices for Trump, to assist with his effort T-0. Speak to Ruby Freeman, a Fulton County, Georgia, election worker. Stephen Cliffgard Lee stated to Harrison William Prescott Floyd that Freeman was afraid to talk to Stephen Cliffgard Lee because he was a white man. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 90. 
On or about the 18th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump met with Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, Sidney Catherine Powell, unindicted. Co-conspirator Individual 20, whose identity is known to the grand jury and others at the White House. The individuals present at the meeting discussed certain strategies and theories intended to influence the outcome of the November 3, 2020, presidential election, including seizing voting equipment and appointing Sidney Catherine Powell as special counsel with broad authority to investigate allegations of voter fraud in Georgia and elsewhere. This was an overt act. In furtherance of the conspiracy, Act 91, on or about the 21st day of December 2020, Sidney Catherine Powell sent an email to the Chief Operations Officer of Sullivan Strickler LLC and instructed him that she and unindicted co-conspirators Individual 6, Individual 21, and Individual 22, whose identities are known to the grand jury, were to immediately receive a copy of all data obtained by Sullivan Strickler LLC from Dominion Voting Systems Equipment in Michigan. This was an Overt Act in Furtherance of the Conspiracy Act 92 On or about the 22nd day of December 2020, Mark Randall Meadows traveled to the Cobb County Civic Center in Cobb County, Georgia, and attempted to observe the signature match audit being performed there by law enforcement officers from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation and the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State, despite the fact that the Audit process was not open to the public. While present at the center, Mark Randall Meadows spoke to Georgia Deputy Secretary of State Jordan Fuchs, Office of the Georgia. Secretary of State Chief Investigator Francis Watson, Georgia Bureau of Investigation Special. Agent in charge Bahan Rich and others who prevented Mark Randall Meadows from entering into the space where the audit was being conducted. This was an overt act in furtherance. Of the Conspiracy Act 93 On or about the 23rd day of December 2020, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to Office of the Georgia Secretary of State Chief Investigator Francis Watson that had been previously arranged by Mark Randall Meadows. During the phone call, Donald John Trump falsely stated that he had won the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia by hundreds of thousands of votes and stated to Watson that when the right answer comes out, you'll be praised. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 94. On or about the 23rd day of December 2020, John Charles Eastman sent an email to Kenneth John Casebro, an unindicted co-conspirator, Individual 3, whose Identity is known to the grand jury, with the subject forward draft 2, with edits. In the email, John Charles Eastman attached a memorandum titled Privileged and Confidential December 23rd Memo on January 6th Scenario. Docs and stated, as for hearings, I think both are unnecessary. The fact that we have multiple slates of electors demonstrates the uncertainty of either. That should be enough. And I agree with Ken that Judiciary Committee. Hearings on the constitutionality of the Electoral Count Act could invite counter views that we do. Not believe should constrain Pence or Grassley in the exercise of power they have under the 12th Amendment. Better for them just to act boldly and be challenged, since the challenge would likely lead to the court denying review on non-justiciable political question grounds. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 95. On or about the 25th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Arizona House of Representatives Rusty Bowers for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning Bowers to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Arizona. During the call, Bowers stated to Trump, I voted for you. I worked for you. I campaigned for you. I just won't de-zero anything illegal for you. This telephone call was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 96. 
On or about the 27th day of December 2020, Mark Randall Meadows sent a text message to Office of the Georgia Secretary of State Chief Investigator Francis Watson that stated in part, is there a way to speed up Fulton County signature verification in order to have results before January 6th if the Trump campaign assist financially? This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 97. On or about the 27th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump solicited Acting United States Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen and Acting United States Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue to make a false statement by stating, just say that the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 98. On or about the 28th day of December 2020, Jeffrey Bossert Clark attempted to commit the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of OCGA October 16th, 20, in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly and willfully making a false writing and document knowing the same to contain the false statement that the United States Department of Justice had identified significant concerns that may have impacted the outcome of the election in multiple states, including the state of Georgia, said statement being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law, Enforcement Agencies, and on or about the 28th day of December 2020, Jeffrey Bossert Clark sent an email to Acting United States Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen and Acting United States. Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue and requested authorization to send said false writing and document to Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives David Ralston and President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate Butch Miller, which constitutes a substantial step toward the commission of false statements and writings. OCGA Section 16-1020 this was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16-14, 3, 5, A, 22, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 99. On or about the 28th day 0 F, December 2020, Jeffrey Bossert Clark solicited Acting United States Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen and Acting United States Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue to sign and send a document that falsely stated that the United States Department of Justice had identified significant concerns that may have impacted the outcome of the election in multiple states, including the state of Georgia, to Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives David Ralston, and President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate Butch Miller. This was an overt act in furtherance of the Conspiracy Act 100 On or about the 30th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be Tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump, hearings from Atlanta on the Georgia Election overturn now being broadcast Check it out At OANN at Newsmax and many more At Brian Kemp GA should resign from office He is an obstructionist who refuses to admit that we one Georgia, big. Also won the other swing states. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 101. On or about the 30th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump, hearings from Atlanta on the Georgia. Election overturn now being broadcast live via at RSB Network https colon slash slash t dot co slash o g b v a k f q g this was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy act 102 on or about the 30th day 0 f december 2020 rudolph william lewis giuliani ray stalling smith three and robert david Cheeley committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer in violation of OCGA sections 16-4-7 and 16-10-1 in Fulton County, Georgia, by soliciting 
requesting and importuning certain public officers then serving as elected members of the Georgia Senate and present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting, including unindicted. Co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury, Senators Brandon Beach, Bill Heath, William Legon, Michael Rett, and Blake Tillery, to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by public officer, OCGAL6 low L, by unlawfully appointing presidential electors from the state of Georgia in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said persons as prescribed by law with intent that said persons engage in said conduct. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 103. On or about the 30th day of December 2020, Rudolph William Lewis. Giuliani committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of 0.CGA, October 16, 20, in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting. L. That Fulton County election workers fraudulently counted certain ballots as many as five times at State Farm Arena on November 3, 2020. 2. That 2,560 felons voted illegally in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. 3. That 10,315 dead people voted in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies. This was an act of racketeering activity under 0.CGA Section 16, 14 to 3, 5, A, 22, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 104. On or about the 30th day of December 2020, Ray Stalling Smith III committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of 0.CGA, October 16, 20, in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting. 1. That Georgia Secretary of State General Counsel Ryan Germany stated that his office had sent letters to 8,000 people who voted illegally in the November 3, 2020, presidential election and told them not to vote in the January 5, 2021, Runoful election. 2. That the Georgia Secretary of State admitted that they had a 90% accuracy rate in the November 3, 2020, presidential election and that there's still a 10% margin. That's not accurate. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies. This was an act of racketeering activity under 0.CGA L6, L435, A22, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 105. On or about the 30th day of December 2020, Robert David Cheeley committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of OCGA. October 16, 20, in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate. Present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting. 1. That poll watchers and media at State Farm Arena were told late in the evening of November 3, 2020, that the vote count was being suspended until the next morning and to go home because of the major water main break. 2. That Fulton County election workers at State Farm Arena voted the same. Ballots over and over again on November 3, 2020. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County 
and city law enforcement agencies. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGAL 6. 14 to 3, 5, A, 22, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 106. On or about the 30th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be. Tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump, we now have far more votes than. Needed to flip Georgia in the presidential race. Massive voter fraud took place. Thank you. To the Georgia legislature for today's revealing meeting. This was an overt act in furtherance of. The conspiracy. Act 107. On or about the 3 LST day of December 2020, Jenna Lynn Ellis wrote a Memorandum titled Memorandum Re, Constitutional Analysis 0F Vice President Authority 4 January 6, 2021 Electoral College Vote Count to Donald John Trump The Memorandum outlined a strategy for disrupting and delaying the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states, and stated the vice president should therefore not open any of the votes from six states, including Georgia, that were falsely characterized as having electoral delegates in dispute. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 108. On or about the 31st day of December 2020, Donald John Trunip and John Charles Eastman committed the felony offense of filing false documents in violation of OCGA Section 16-10-20.1b1 in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly filing a document titled Verified Complaint for Emergency Injunctive and Declaratory Relief in the Matter of Trump v. Kemp, Case 1 colon 20 CV 05310 MHC in the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia, a court of the United States. Having reason to know that said document contained at least one of the following materially false statements. L. That as many as 2,506 felons with an uncompleted sentence voted illegally in the November 3rd, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. 2. That at least 66,247 underage people voted illegally in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. 3. That at least 2,423 individuals voted illegally in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia who were not listed in the state's records as having been registered to vote. 4. That at least 1,043 individuals voted illegally in the November 3, 2020, presidential election who had illegally registered to vote using a postal office box as their habitation. 5. That as many as 10,315 or more dead people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. 6. That D. Elaborate misinformation was used to instruct Republican poll watchers and members of the press to leave the premises for the night at approximately 10 p.m. on November 3, 2020, inch at State Farm Arena in Fulton County, Georgia. Earlier on the same day, John Charles Eastman sent an email to attorneys associated with the Trump campaign admitting his knowledge that at least some of the allegations in the Verified complaint were not accurate. This filing was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16-14-3-5A-22 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 109. On or about the LST day of January 2021, Kenneth John Casebro sent an E. Mail to John Charles Eastman and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 3, whose identity is known to the grand jury. In the email, Kenneth John Casebro outlined a strategy for disrupting and delaying the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states. 
This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 110 On or about the second day 0 F. January 2021, Scott Graham Hall, a Georgia bail. Bondsman placed a telephone call to Jeffrey Bossert Clark and discussed the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. The telephone call was 63 minutes in. Duration This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 111 On or about the second day 0 F. January 2021, Jeffrey Bossert Clark solicited Acting United States Attorney General Jeffrey Ray Rosen and Acting United States Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue to sign and send a document that falsely stated that the United States Department of Justice had identified significant concerns that may have impacted the outcome of the election in multiple states, including the state of Georgia, to Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives David Ralston, and President Pro. Temporary of the Georgia Senate Butch Miller. This was an overt act in furtherance of the Conspiracy. Act 112. On or about the second day 0 F. January 2021, Donald John Trump and Mark. Randall Meadows committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation. Of oath by public officer and violation of OCGA sections 16-4-7 and 16-10-1 in Fulton. County, Georgia, by unlawfully soliciting, requesting, and importuning Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, a public officer, to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of Violation of Oath by Public Officer, OCGA Section 16-10-1, by unlawfully altering, unlawfully adjusting, and otherwise unlawfully influencing the certified returns for presidential electors for the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia, in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said person as prescribed by law, with intent that said person engage in said conduct. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 113. On or about the second day of January 2021, Donald John Trump committed the Felony offense of false statements and writings and violation of OCGA Section 16. 10 to 20 in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations to Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, Georgia Deputy Secretary of State Jordan Fuchs, and Georgia Secretary of State General Counsel Ryan Germany. L. That anywhere from 250,000 to 300,000 ballots were dropped mysteriously into the rolls in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. 2. That thousands of people attempted to vote in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia and were told they could not because a ballot had already been cast in their name. 3. That 4,502 people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia who were not on the voter registration list. 4. That 904 people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia who were registered at an address that was a post office box. 5. That Ruby Freeman was a professional vote scammer and a known political operative. 6. That Ruby Freeman, her daughter, and others were responsible for fraudulently awarding at least 18,000 ballots to Joseph R. Biden at State Farm Arena in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. 7. That close to 5,000 dead people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. 8. That 139% of people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Detroit. 9. That 200,000 more votes were recorded than the number of people who voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Pennsylvania. 10. That thousands of dead people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Michigan. LL. That Ruby Freeman stuffed the ballot boxes. 
12, that hundreds of thousands of ballots had been dumped into Fulton County and another county adjacent to Fulton County in the November 3, 2020. Presidential election in Georgia, 13. That he won the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia by 400,000 votes. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments, and Agencies of State Government. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16-14-3-5A-22 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 114. On or about the third day of January 2021, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump, I spoke to Secretary of State Brad Raffian Spurger yesterday about Fulton County and voter fraud in Georgia. He was unwilling, or unable, to answer questions such as the ballots under table scam, ballot destruction, out of state, voters, dead voters, and more. He has no clue. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Alice. On or about the third day of January 2021, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, and Trevian C. Coody placed multiple telephone calls and sent text messages to each other and to other individuals involved in the conspiracy. They include the following. L. At 7.48 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd placed a telephone call to Ruby Freeman, a Fulton County, Georgia, election worker, that was unsuccessful. 2. At 7.49 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd placed a telephone call to Ruby Freeman that was unsuccessful. 3. At 7.49 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd placed a telephone Call to Trevian C. Coody. 4. At 7.53 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd sent a text message to Ruby Freeman. 5. At 8.03 p.m., Trevian C. Coody placed a telephone call to Harrison. William Prescott Floyd. 6. At 8.11 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd placed a telephone. Call to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 23, who SE identity is known to the Grand. Jury. 7. At 8.18 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd placed a telephone. Call to Stephen Cliffgard Lee. 8. At 8.48 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd placed a telephone. Call to Trevian C. Coody. 9. At 9.16 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd placed a telephone. Call to Trevian C. Coody. 10. At 9.33 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd placed a telephone. Call to Trevian C. Coody. 11. At 9.50 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd placed a telephone. Call to Stephen Cliffgard Lee. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. ALILQ on. Or about the fourth day of January 2021, Trevian C. Coody, having been recruited by Harrison William Prescott Floyd, traveled from Chicago, Illinois, to Atlanta, Georgia, and caused a certain individual, whose identity is known to the grand jury, to pick her up FIAM, a train station in Fulton County, Georgia, for the purpose of attempting to contact Ruby Freeman, a Fulton County, Georgia, election worker. This was an overt act in furtherance of the Conspiracy Act 117 On or about the fourth day of January 2021, Trevian C. Coody traveled to Ruby Freeman's home in Cobb County, Georgia, and attempted to contact her but was unsuccessful. Trevian C. Coody spoke with Freeman's neighbor and falsely stated that she was a crisis manager attempting to help Freeman before leaving Freeman's home. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 118. On or about the fourth day of January 2021, Trevian C. Coody, while in Fulton County, Georgia, placed a telephone call to Ruby Freeman and stated that Freeman was in danger. 
Trevian C. Cudi stated that she could help Freeman and requested that Freeman meet with and speak to her that night at a Cobb County Police Department precinct in Cobb County, Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 112. On or about the fourth day of January 2021, Trevian C. Cudi traveled to a Cobb County Police Department precinct in Cobb County, Georgia, and met with and spoke to Ruby. Freeman for approximately one hour. Harrison William Prescott Floyd joined. The meeting by telephone. Trevian C. Cudi and Harrison William Prescott. Floyd stated to Freeman that she needed protection and purported to offer her help. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 120. On or about the fourth day of January 2021, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, and Trevian C. Cudi committed the felony offense of solicitation of false statements and writings in Violation of OCGA Section 16-4-7 and October 16, 20, in Cobb County, Georgia, by soliciting, requesting, and importuning Ruby Freeman, a Fulton County, Georgia, election worker, to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of false statements and writings, OCGA October 16, 20, by knowingly and willfully making a false statement and representation concerning events at State Farm Arena in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia, said statement and representation being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies with intent that said person engage in said conduct. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA L614-3, 5A, 22, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 121. On or about the fourth day of January 2021, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, and Trevian C. Cudi committed the Felony offense of influencing witnesses in violation of OCGA Section 16 10. 93 B. 1. A. in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly and unlawfully engaging in misleading conduct toward Ruby Freeman, a Fulton County, Georgia, election worker, by stating that she needed protection and by purporting to offer her help with intent to influence her testimony in. An official proceeding in Fulton County, Georgia, concerning events at State Farm Arena in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. This was an act of racketeering activity. Under OCGA Section 16 14 3 5A 27, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 123. On or about the fourth day of January 2020, John Charles Eastman placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Arizona House of Representatives Rusty Bowers and solicited, requested, and importuned Bowers to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Arizona. During the telephone call, Bowers declined to comply with Eastman's request and stated that he would not risk violating his oath of office. The request was an overt act in furtherance of the Conspiracy Act 124 On or about the fourth day 0F January 2021, Kenneth John Casebro sent an email to John Charles Eastman with the subject forward, draft 2, with edits and included. Within the body of the email, another email that Kenneth John Casebro previously sent to Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani with the subject privileged and Confidential brief notes on President of the Senate strategy. In the email, Kenneth John Casebro outlined multiple strategies for disrupting and delaying the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states, and stated that the Outcomes of any of these strategies were preferable to allowing the Electoral Count Act to operate by its terms. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. 
Act 123. On or about the fourth day of January 2021, Donald John Trump and John. Charles Eastman met with Vice President Mike Pence, Chief of Staff to the Vice. President Mark Short and counsel to the Vice President Greg Jacob in the Oval Office at the White House. During the meeting, Donald John Trump and John Charles. Eastman argued to Pence that he could either reject electoral votes from certain states or delay the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting. Votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states for the purpose of allowing certain state legislatures to unlawfully appoint presidential electors in favor of Donald John Trump. During the meeting, John Charles Eastman admitted both options violated the Electoral Count Act. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 126 on or about the 5th day 0F January 2021, Jenna Ellis wrote a memorandum titled Re, Vice President Authority in Counting Electors Pursuant to U.S. Constitution and 3. U.S. Code Sections 5 and 15 inch to an attorney associated with Donald John Trump. The memorandum outlined a strategy for disrupting and delaying the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states, and stated the vice president should begin alphabetically in order of the states and coming first to Arizona, not open the purported certification, but simply stop the count at that juncture. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 127. On or about the fifth day of January 2021, Robert David Cheeley, Stephen. Cliffguard Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, Trevian C. Cootie, and Scott Graham Hall placed multiple telephone calls to each other and to other individuals involved in the conspiracy. They include the following. L. 10. LL. 12. At 11.32 a.m., Stephen Cliffgard Lee placed a telephone call to Trevian. C. Cootie. At 12.14 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd, Trevian C. Cootie, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, an unindicted co-conspirator individual. 23, whose identity is known to the grand jury, participated in a four-way telephone. Call. 2. At 12.19 p.m., Scott Graham Hall placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. 3. At 12.34 p.m., Scott Graham Hall placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. 4. At 1.07 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Scott Graham Hall. 5. At 1.09 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Scott Graham Hall. 6. At 2.30 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Harrison. William Prescott Floyd. 7. At 2.45 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. At 3.59 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Scott. Graham Hall. 9.0. At 4.42 p.m., Stephen Cliffgard Lee placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. At 4.50 p.m., Stephen Cliffgard Lee placed a telephone call to Harrison William Prescott Floyd. At 5.05 p.m., Stephen Cliffgard Lee placed a telephone call to Harrison William Prescott Floyd. Act 129 on or about the fifth day of January 2021, John Charles Eastman met with Chief of Staff to the Vice President Mark Short and Counsel to the Vice President Greg Jacob IV. The purpose of requesting that Vice President Mike Pence reject slates of presidential electors from Georgia and certain other states during the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021. The day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states. 
This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 130 On or about the fifth day of January 2021, Donald John Trump met with Vice. President Mike Pence in the Oval Office at the White House. During the meeting, Donald John Trump stated that Pence had the power to decertify the November 3, 2020, presidential election results that people cheated and that Pence wanted to play by Marquis of Queensbury. Rules When Pence stated that it was his duty to support and defend the Constitution and that only Congress had the power to decide to reject slates of presidential electors, Donald John. Trump stated that Pence was naive, implied that he lacked courage, and stated that Pence was doing a great disservice. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 131 On or about the fifth day of January 2021, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to Vice President Mike Pence. During the telephone call, Donald John Trump and John Charles Eastman attempted to persuade Pence to reject slates of presidential electors or return the slates of presidential electors to state legislatures. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 132 On or about the fifth day of January 2021, Donald John Trump placed a second telephone call to Vice President Mike Pence. During the telephone call, Donald John, Trump asked Pence if he had received a copy of a letter from a group of Pennsylvania legislators urging Congress to return the state's electoral college votes and stated to Pence, you gotta be tough tomorrow. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 133. On or about the fifth day of January 2021, Donald John Trump issued a Statement through the Trump campaign that falsely stated the vice president and I are in total agreement that the vice president has the power to act. Our vice president has several options. Under the U.S. Constitution, he can decertify the results or send them back to the states for change and certification. He can also decertify the illegal and corrupt results and send them to the House of Representatives for the one vote for one state tabulation. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 134. On or about the sixth day of January 2021, Katia Eileen Alston Latham placed a telephone call to Scott Graham Hall. Several hours later, Scott Graham Hall placed a telephone call to Kathleen Alston Latham during at least one of the phone. Calls, they discussed Scott Graham Hall's request to assist with the unlawful breach of election equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 135. On or about the sixth day of January 2021, Donald John Trump appeared and spoke at a rally at the Ellipse in Washington, D.C. During the rally, Donald John Trump made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia and elsewhere, solicited Vice President Mike Pence to disrupt and delay the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states, and encouraged those in attendance at the rally to march to the United States Capitol. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 136 On or about the sixth day of January 2021, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani appeared and spoke at a rally at the Ellipse in Washington, D.C. During the rally, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3rd. 2020 presidential election in Georgia and elsewhere and solicited Vice President Mike Pence to disrupt and delay the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. 
Act 137. On or about the sixth day of January 2021, John Charles Eastman appeared and spoke at a rally at the Ellipse in Washington, D.C. During the rally, John Charles Eastman made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020, presidential election and solicited Vice President Mike Pence to disrupt and delay the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 141. On or about the sixth day of January 2021, John Charles Eastman sent an email to counsel to the Vice President Greg Jacob that stated, The Senate and House have both violated the Electoral Count Act this evening. They debated the Arizona objections for more than two hours. Violation of 3 U.S.C. L7 and the VP allowed from the debate or statements by leadership after the question had been voted upon. Violation of 3 U.S.C. 17. And they had that debate. Upon motion approved by the VP and violation of the requirement in 3 U.S.C. 15 that after the vote in the separate houses, they shall immediately again meet. So now that the precedent has been set that the Electoral Count Act is not quite so sacrosanct as was previously claimed, I implore you to consider one more relatively minor violation and adjourn for 10 days to allow the legislatures to finish their investigations as well as to allow a full forensic audit of the massive amount of illegal activity that has occurred here. If none of that moves the needle, at least a good portion of the 75 million people who supported President Trump will have seen a process that allowed the illegality to be aired. John This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 142 On or about the 7th day of January 2021, Katia Eileen Alston Latham sent a text message to the Chief Operations Officer of Sullivan Strickler LLC with the address for the Douglas Municipal Airport in Coffee County, Georgia, to coordinate picking up Scott. Graham Hall from the airport and driving him to the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office for the purpose of assisting with the unlawful breach of election equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office. This was an act of racketeering. Activity under OCGA Section 16-14-35B and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 143. On or about the 7th day of January 2021, Scott Graham Hall and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 24, whose identity is known to the grand jury, flew from DeKalb Peachtree Airport in DeKalb County, Georgia, to Douglas Municipal Airport in Coffee County, Georgia, for the purpose of assisting with the unlawful breach of election equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office. This was an act of racketeering activity. Under OCGA L6L4-3-5B and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 144. On or about the 7th day of January 2021, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense of interference with primaries and elections. In violation of OCGA Section 21-2-566 in Coffee County, Georgia, by willfully and unlawfully tampering with electronic ballot markers and tabulating machines in Coffee County, Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 145. On or about the 7th day of January 2021, Sidney Catherine Powell. Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense of unlawful possession of ballots in violation of OCGA Section 21-2-574 in Coffee County, Georgia, by causing certain members of the conspiracy who were not officers charged by law with the care of ballots and who were not persons 
entrusted by any such officer with the care of ballots for a purpose required by law to possess. Official ballots outside of the polling place in Coffee County, Georgia. This was an overt act in Furtherance of the Conspiracy Act 146 On or about the 7th day 0 F. January 2021, Sidney Catherine Powell Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense of computer theft and violation of OCGA Section 169-93-A in Coffee County, Georgia, by using a computer with knowledge that such use was without authority and with the intention of taking and appropriating information, data, and software, the property of Dominion Voting Systems Corporation in Coffee County, Georgia. This was an act of Racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614-3, 5A, 19, and an overt act in furtherance of the Conspiracy Act 147 On or about the 7th day of January 2021, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense of computer trespass and violation of OCGA Section 16-9-93-B in Coffee County, Georgia, by using a computer with knowledge that such use was without authority and with the intention of removing voter data and Dominion Voting Systems. Corporation data from said computer in Coffee County, Georgia. This was an act of racketeering. Activity under OCGA Section 16-14-3, 5A, 19, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 148. On or about the 7th day of January 2021, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense of computer invasion of privacy in violation of OCGA Section 16-9-93-C in Coffee County, Georgia, by using a computer with the intention of examining personal voter data with knowledge that such examination was without authority. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16-14-3-5-A-19 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 149. On and between the 6th day 0 F. December 2020 and the 7th day of January 2021, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham, Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense of conspiracy to defraud the state in violation of OCGA October 16, 21, in Coffee County, Georgia, by unlawfully conspiring and agreeing to commit theft of voter data, property which was under the control of Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffiansperger, a state officer, in his official capacity. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16-14-3-5-B and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 150 on or about the 9th day of January 2021, the 10th day of January 2021, the 11th day, 0 F January 2021, and the 13th day of January 2021, unindicted co-conspirator individual 25, whose identity is known to the grand jury, unlawfully accessed certain data copied from Dominion Voting Systems Equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration. Office in Coffee County, Georgia, by downloading said data file on a server maintained by Sullivan Strickler LLC. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA L6L435B and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 151. On or about the 9th day of January 2021, the 10th day of January 2021, the 11th day. 0 F January 2021, the 18th day of January 2021, and the 19th day of January 2021. Unindicted co-conspirator individual 26, whose identity is unknown to the grand jury, unlawfully accessed certain data copied from Dominion Voting Systems equipment at the Coffee 
County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia, by downloading said data from a server maintained by Sullivan Strickler LLC. This was an act of racketeering. Activity under OCGA Section 16-14-35B and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 152. On or about the 10th day 0F January 2021, the 12th day of January 2021, the 13th day of January 2021, the 25th day of February 2021, and the 26th day of February 2021. Unindicted co-conspirator individual 27, whose identity is unknown to the grand jury. Unlawfully accessed certain data copied from Dominion Voting Systems equipment at the Coffee. County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia, by downloading. Said data from a server maintained by Sullivan Strickler, LLC. This was an act of racketeering. Activity under OCGA Section 16-14-35B and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 153. On or about the 13th day 0F January 2021, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 28, whose identity is known to the grand jury, unlawfully accessed certain data copied from. Dominion Voting Systems Equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration. Office in Coffee County, Georgia, by downloading said data from a server maintained by Sullivan Strickler, LLC. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA L614 35 b and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 154. On or about the 18th day of January 2021, Misty Hampton allowed unindicted co-conspirators. Individual 25 and Individual 29, whose identities are known to the grand jury, to access non-public areas of the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffley County, Georgia, and facilitated their access to Dominion Voting Systems equipment this was. An overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 155. On or about the 22nd day of April 2021, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 28, whose identity is known to the grand jury, sent an email to the Chief Operations Officer of Sullivan Strickler LLC directing him to transmit all data copied from Dominion Voting Systems. Equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County. Georgia, to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 30, whose identity is known to the grand jury. An attorney associated with Sidney Catherine Powell and the Trump campaign. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16-14-35B and an overt act in. Furtherance of the Conspiracy Act 156 on or about the 17th day of September 2021, Donald John Trump committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer and violation of OCGA sections 16-4-7 and 16-10-1 in Fulton County, Georgia, by unlawfully soliciting, requesting, and importuning Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, a public Officer, to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by public. Officer, OCGA Section 16-10-1, by unlawfully decertifying the election, or whatever the correct legal remedy is, and announce the true winner, in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said person as prescribed by law, with intent that said person engage in said conduct. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 157. On or about the 17th day of September 2021, Donald John Trump committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of OCGA Section 16, 10 to 20, in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making the following. False statement and representation to Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. 
L, as stated to you previously, the number of false and or irregular votes is far greater than needed to change the Georgia election result. Said statement being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA L6. L4-3, 5, A, 22, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 158. On or about the 25th day of April 2022, David James Schaefer committed the felony offense of false statements and writings and violation of OCGA Section 16. 10 to 20, in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations in the presence of Fulton County District. Attorney's Office Investigators 1. That he attended and convened the December 14, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, but that he did not call each of the individual members and notify them of the meeting or make any of the other preparations necessary for the meeting. 2. That a court reporter was not present at the December 14, 2020, meeting of Trump. Presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, A. Department and Agency of the Government of a County of this state. This was an act of Racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16-14-3, 5A, 22, and an overt act in furtherance of the Conspiracy. Act 159. On or about the seventh day of May 2022, Sidney Catherine Powell made at least one of the following false statements and representations in a sworn deposition with the United States House of Representatives Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. 1. That she didn't have any role in really setting up efforts to access voting machines in Coffee County, Georgia, or Antrim County, Michigan. 2. That she was aware there was an effort by some people to get access to voting machines in Georgia, but that she did not know what happened with that and did not. Remember whether that was Rudy or other folks. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 160. On or about the first day of September 2022, Kathleen Alston Latham committed the felony offense of perjury in violation of OCGA Section 16-1070A in Houston County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following. False statements in a deposition in the matter of Curling v. Raffensperger, Case 1, 17 CV 02989. At in the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia, a judicial proceeding. After having been administered a lawful oath. L. That she was only present at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office. In Coffee County, Georgia, for just a few minutes on January 7, 2021 that she only walked into the front part of the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office on January 7, 2021, and didn't go into the office. 2. That she had no idea if employees of Sullivan Strickler met Eric Cheney at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office on January 7, 2021. 3. That she did not see Misty Hampton at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office on January 7, 2021. 4. That her only interaction with Scott Hall at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office on January 7, 2021 was meeting him, speaking to him outside of the office, and then leaving the office. 5. That she did not see Scott Hall speak to anyone other than herself at the Coffee County. Board of Elections and Registration Office on January 7, 2021. 6. Said statements being material to the accused own involvement in the January 7, 2021. Unlawful breach of election equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration. 
office and to the accused communications with others involved, the issues in question. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA L6L4-3, 5A, 25, and an overt act in Furtherance of the Conspiracy Act 161 On or about the 15th day of September 2022, Robert David Cheeley committed the felony offense of perjury in violation of OCGA Section 16-10-70A in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following. False statements before the Fulton County Special Purpose Grand Jury, a judicial proceeding. After having been administered a lawful oath. 1. That he was unaware of the December 14, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector. Nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, until after the meeting had already taken place. 2. That he had no substantive conversations with anyone concerning the December 14, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, until after the meeting had already taken place. 3. That he never suggested to anyone that the Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia should meet on December 14, 2020. 4. That the only communication he had with John Eastman concerning the November 3rd, 2020, presidential election was for the purpose of connecting Eastman to Georgia Senator Brandon Beach and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury for possible legal representation. 5. That he never worked to connect John Eastman with any Georgia legislators other than Georgia Senator Brandon Beach and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury. Said statements being material to the accused own involvement in the December 14, 2020. Meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, and to the accused. Communications with others involved in the meeting, the issues in question. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614-3, 5A, 25, and an overt act in furtherance of the Conspiracy. The acts set forth above were committed in furtherance of the conspiracy alleged above, and had the same and similar intents, results, accomplices, victims, and methods of commission, and otherwise were interrelated by distinguishing characteristics and were not isolated acts. Count 2 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do. Charge and accuse Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Jenna Lynn Ellis, and Ray Stalling Smith III with the offense of Solicitation of Violation of Oath by Public Officer, OCGA Section 16-4-7 and 16-10-1 for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of A crime, and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia, on the third day 0F December 2020, unlawfully solicited, requested, and importuned. Certain public officers then serving as elected members of the Georgia Senate and present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting, including unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury, Senators Lee Anderson, Brandon Beach, Matt Brass, Greg Dolezal, Steve Gooch, Tyler Harper, Bill Heath, Jen Jordan, John F. Kennedy, William, Legon, Elena Parent, Michael Rett, Cardin Summers, and Blake Tillery to engage in conduct. Constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by public officer, OCGA Section 16-10-1, by unlawfully appointing presidential electors from the state of Georgia in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said persons as prescribed by law with intent that said persons engage in said conduct, said date being a material element of the oath lens, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace and dignity thereof. Count 3 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Rudolph William Louis Giuliani with the offense of false 
Statements and Writings, OCGA October 16, 20, for the said accused, in the county of Fulton and State of Georgia, on or about the third day of December 2020, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully made at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting. 1. That at least 96,600 mail-in ballots were counted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia, despite there being no record of those ballots having been returned to a county elections office. 2. That a Dominion voting systems machine used in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Antrim County, Michigan, mistakenly recorded 6,000 votes for Joseph R. Biden when the votes were actually cast for Donald Trump. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace and dignity thereof. Count 40F41 and the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Ray Stalling Smith III with the offense of false statements and writings, OCGA October 16, 20, for the said accused, in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia, on or about the third day of December 2020, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully made at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting. L. That 2,506 felons voted illegally in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. That 66,248 underage people illegally registered to vote before their 17th birthday. Prior to the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. 2 that at least 2,423 people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia WHO were not listed as registered to vote. 3. That 1,043 people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia who had illegally registered to vote using a post office box. 4. That 10,315 or more dead people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. 5. That Fulton County election workers at State Farm Arena ordered poll watchers and members of the media to leave the tabulation area on the night of November 3, 2020, and continued to operate after ordering everyone to leave. 6. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace and dignity thereof. Count 5 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Donald John Trump with the offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer, OCGA Section 16-4-7 and 16-10-1 for the said accused in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia on or about the 7th day 0F. December 2020, unlawfully solicited, requested, and importuned Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives David Ralston, a public officer, to engage in conduct constituting the felony. Offense of violation of oath by public officer, OCGA Section 16-10-1, by calling for a special session of the Georgia General Assembly for the purpose of unlawfully appointing presidential electors from the state of Georgia in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said person as prescribed by law, with intent that said person engage in said conduct, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace and dignity thereof. Count 6 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Rudolph William Louis Giuliani and Ray Stallings. 
Smith 3 with the offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public. Officer, OCGA Sections 16-4-7 and 16-10-1 for the said accused, individually and as persons. Concerned in the commission of a crime and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the County of Fulton and State of Georgia on the 10th day 0F December 2020, unlawfully solicited. Requested and importuned certain public officers then serving as elected members of the Georgia. House of Representatives and present at a House Governmental Affairs Committee meeting, including Representatives Shaw Blackman, John Burns, Barry Fleming, Todd Jones, Bean Gwynn, Mary Margaret Oliver, Alan Powell, Renita Shannon, Robert Trammell, Scott Turner, and Bruce Williamson to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by public. Officer, OCGA Section 1610 by unlawfully appointing presidential electors from the state of Georgia in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said persons as prescribed. By law, with intent that said persons engage in said conduct, said date being a material element of the offense, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 7 of 41 and the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Rudolph William Louis Giuliani with the offense of false. Statements and writings, OCGA October 16th, 20, for the said accused, in the county of Fulton and State of Georgia, on or about the 10th day of December 2020, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully made at least one of the following false statements and representations. To members of the Georgia House of Representatives present at a House Governmental Affairs Committee meeting. L. That it is quite clear from the State Farm Arena video from November 3, 2020, that Fulton County election workers were stealing votes and that Georgia officials were covering up a crime in plain sight. That at State Farm Arena on November 3, 2020, Democratic officials got rid of all of the Reporters, all the observers, anyone that couldn't be trusted, used the excuse of a water main break, cleared out the voting area, and then went about their dirty, crooked business. 2. That between 12,000 and 24,000 ballots were illegally counted by Fulton County election. Workers at State Farm Arena on November 3, 2020. 3. That in Michigan, there were 700,000 more ballots counted than were sent out to voters. In the November 3, 2020, presidential election, which was accounted for by quadruple. Counting ballots. 4. That Ruby Freeman, Shea Moss, and an unidentified man were quite obviously. Surreptitiously passing around USB ports as if they're vials of heroin or cocaine at state. Farm Marina is to be used to infiltrate the crooked Dominion voting machines. 5. That 96,600 mail in ballots were counted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election. In Georgia, despite there being no record of those ballots having been returned to a county elections office. 6. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County, and City Law Enforcement Agencies, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace and dignity thereof. Count 8 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse David James Schaefer, Sean Micah Tresher Still, and Kathleen Alston Latham with the offense of impersonating a public officer, OCGA October 16, 23, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia on or about the 14th day of December 2020, unlawfully falsely held themselves out as the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from the state of Georgia, public officers with intent to mislead the President of the United States Senate, the Archivist of the United States, the Georgia Secretary of State, and the Chief Judge of the United States, 
District Court for the Northern District of Georgia into believing that they actually were such. Officers by placing in the United States mail to said persons a document titled Certificate of the votes of the 2020 electors from Georgia, contrary to the laws of said. State, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 9 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do. Charge and accuse Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani. John Charles Eastman, Kenneth John Casebro, Ray Stallings. Smith III, Robert David Cheeley, and Michael A. Roman with the offense of Conspiracy to commit impersonating a public officer, OCGA. 16-4-8 and October 16, 23, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the Commission of a crime, and together with indicted and unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and State of Georgia, on and between the 6th day of December 2020 and the 14th day of December 2020, unlawfully conspired to cause certain individuals to falsely hold themselves out as the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from the State of Georgia, public officers with intent to mislead the President of the United States Senate, the Archivist of the United States, the Georgia Secretary of State, and the Chief Judge of the United States, District Court for the Northern District of Georgia into believing that they actually were such officers, and the defendants named in Count 8, acting as co-conspirators, as described above and incorporated by reference as if fully set forth herein, falsely held themselves out as said public. Officers by placing in the United States mail to said persons a document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 Electors from Georgia in Fulton County, Georgia, which was an overt act to effect the object of the conspiracy, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 10 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse David James Schaefer, Sean Micah Tresher Still, and Kathleen Alston Latham with the offense of forgery in the first degree, OCGA Section 16-9-1b, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and State of Georgia, on or about the 14th day of December 2020, unlawfully and with the intent to defraud, knowingly made a document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 electors from Georgia, a writing other than a check, in such manner that the writing is made purports to have been made by authority of the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from the state of Georgia, who did not give such authority, and uttered and delivered said document to the archivist of the United States, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 110F41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Kenneth John Casebro, Ray Stallings, Smith III, Robert David Cheeley, and Michael A. Roman with the offense of Conspiracy to commit forgery in the first degree, OCGA section 16-4-8 and 16-91b, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with indicted and unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and State of Georgia, on and between the 6th day of December 2020 and the 14th day of December 2020, unlawfully conspired, with the intent to defraud, to knowingly make a Document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 Electors from Georgia, a writing other than a check, in such manner that the writing is made purports to have been made by authority of the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from the state of Georgia, who did not give such authority, and to utter and deliver said document to the Archivist of the United States, and the defendants named in Count 10, acting as co-conspirators, as described above and incorporated by reference as if Philly set forth herein, made said document in Fulton County, 
Georgia, and uttered and delivered said document to the Archivist of the United States and Fulton County, Georgia, which were overt acts to effect the object of the conspiracy, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 120F41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse David James Schaefer, Sean Micah Tresher Still, and Kathleen Alston Latham with the offense of false statements and Writings, OCGA October 16, 20, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned. In the commission of a crime, and together with unindicted co-conspirators, in the county of Fulton and State of Georgia, on or about the 14th day of December 2020, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully made and used a false document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 electors from Georgia, with knowledge that said document contained the false statement, we, the undersigned, being the duly elected and qualified electors for President and Vice President of the United States of America from the state of Georgia, do hereby certify the following, said document being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Office of the Governor of Georgia, Departments and Agencies of state government, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 130F41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Kenneth John Casebro, Ray Stallings, Smith III, Robert David Cheeley, and Michael A. Roman with the offense of Conspiracy to Commit False Statements and Writings, OCGA Section 16, 4 to 8 and October 16, 20, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with indicted and unindicted co conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia, on and between the 6th day of December 2020 and the 14th day of December 2020 unlawfully conspired to knowingly and willfully make and use a false document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 Electors from Georgia, with knowledge that said document contained the false statement, we, the undersigned, being the duly elected and qualified electors for President and Vice President of the United States of America from the state of Georgia, do hereby certify the following, said Document being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Office of the Governor of Georgia, Departments and Agencies of State Government, and the defendants named in Count 12, acting as co-conspirators, as described above, and incorporated by reference as if fully set forth herein, made and used said document in Fulton County, Georgia, which were overt acts to effect the object of the conspiracy, contrary to the Laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 14 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse David James Schaefer, Sean Micah Tresher Still, and Kathleen Alston Latham with the offense of criminal attempt to commit filing false documents, OCGA sections 16.4-1 and 16-10-20.1 b. 1. for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia, on or about the 14th day of December 2020, unlawfully, with intent to commit the crime of filing false. Documents, OCGA Section 16-10-20.L, B, 1, placed in the United States mail a document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 Electors from Georgia, addressed to Chief Judge, U.S. District Court, Northern District of Georgia, 2188 Richard D. Russell, Federal Office Building and U.S. Courthouse, 75, Ted Turner Drive, SW, Atlanta, Georgia, 30303A. Substantial step toward the commission of filing false documents, OCGA section 1610-20.1, B. 1. With intent to knowingly file, enter, 
and record said document in a court of the United States. Having reason to know that said document contained the materially false statement, we, the undersigned, being the duly elected and qualified electors for president and vice president, of the United States of America from the state of Georgia, do hereby certify the following. Contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 15 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do. Charge and accuse Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani. John Charles Eastman, Kenneth John Casebro, Ray Stallings. Smith III, Robert David Cheely, and Michael A. Roman with the offense of Conspiracy T-0 commit filing false documents, OCGA Section 16-48 and 16. 10-20.1, B-1, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with indicted and unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and State of Georgia, on and between the 6th day of December 2020 and the 14th day of December 2020, unlawfully conspired to knowingly file, enter, and record a document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 Electors from Georgia in a Court of the United States, having reason to know that said document contained the materially false statement, we, the undersigned, being the duly elected and qualified electors for President and Vice President of the United States of America from the State of Georgia, do hereby certify the following. And the defendants named in Count 14, acting as co-conspirators, as described above, and incorporated by reference as if fully set forth herein, placed in the United States mail said, document addressed to Chief Judge, U.S. District Court, Northern District of Georgia, 2188. Richard D. Russell Federal Office Building and U.S. Courthouse, 75, Ted Turner Drive, SW. Atlanta, Georgia, 30303, and Fulton County, Georgia, which was an overt act to effect the object of the conspiracy, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count L6 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse David James Schaefer and Sean Micah Tresher still with the offense of forgery in the first degree, OCGA section 16-9-1b, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with Unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia on or about the 14th day of December 2020, unlawfully and with the intent to defraud, knowingly made a document. Titled RE, Notice of Filling of Electoral College Vacancy, a writing other than a check, and such. Manner that the writing is made purports to have been made by the authority of the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from the state of Georgia who did not give such authority and uttered and delivered said document to the Archivist of the United States and the Office of the Governor of Georgia, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity. Thereof. Count 17 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Kenneth John Casebro, Ray Stallings, Smith III, Robert David Cheely, and Michael A. Roman with the offense of Conspiracy to Commit Forgery in the First Degree, OCGA Section 16-4-8 and 16-9-1-B, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of A. Crime, and together with indicted and unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and State of Georgia, on and between the 6th day of December 2020 and the 14th day of December 2020, unlawfully conspired, with the intent to defraud, to knowingly make a document titled RE, Notice of Filling of Electoral College Vacancy, a writing other than a check, in such manner that the writing is made purports to have been made by the authority of the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from the state of Georgia, who did not give 
such authority and to utter and deliver said document to the archivist of the United States and the office of the governor of Georgia and the defendants named in count L6 acting as co-conspirators as described above and incorporated by reference as if fully set forth herein made said document in Fulton County Georgia and uttered and delivered said document to the archivist of the United States and the Office of the Governor of Georgia in Fulton County, Georgia, which were overt acts to effect the object of the conspiracy, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity. Thereof. Count 18 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse David James Schaefer and Sean Micah Tresher still with the offense of false statements and writings, OCGA section 16-1020, for the said. Accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with. Unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia, on or about the 14th. Day of December 2020, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully made and used a false document. Titled Re, Notice of Filling of Electoral College Vacancy, with knowledge that said document. Contained the false statements that David James Schaefer was chairman of the 2020. Georgia Electoral College Meeting and Sean Micah Tresher still was secretary of. The 2020 Georgia Electoral College Meeting, said document being within the jurisdiction of the. Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Office of the Governor of Georgia, Departments and agencies of state government, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 190F41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Kenneth John Casebro, Ray Stallings, Smith three, Robert David Cheeley and Michael A. Roman with the offense of Conspiracy to commit false statements and writings, OCGA section 16. 4 to 8 and October 16th, 20, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with indicted and unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and State of Georgia, on and between the 6th day 0F December 2020 and the 14th day of December 2020, unlawfully conspired to knowingly and willfully make and use a false document titled Re, Notice of Filling of Electoral College Vacancy, with knowledge that said. Document contained the false statements that David James Schaefer was chairman of the 2020 Georgia Electoral College meeting and Sean Micah Tresher still was. Secretary of the 2020 Georgia Electoral College meeting, said document being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Office of the Governor of Georgia, Departments and Agencies of State Government, and the defendants named in Count L8, acting as co-conspirators, as described above, and incorporated by reference as if fully set forth herein, made and used said document in Fulton. County, Georgia, which were overt acts to effect the object of the conspiracy, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 20F41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Stephen Cliffgard Lee with the offense of criminal. Attempt T.O. Commit Influencing Witnesses, OCGA Section 16-4-1 and 16-10. 93. B. 1. A. For the said accused, in the County of Fulton and State of Georgia, on the 14th day. 0. F. December 2020, unlawfully, with intent to commit the crime of influencing witnesses. OCGA L6-93. B. L. A traveled to the home of Ruby Freeman of Fulton County, Georgia, election worker, and spoke to her neighbor, a substantial step toward the commission of Influencing Witnesses, OCGA October 16, 93, B.L.A., with intent to knowingly engage in misleading conduct toward Ruby Freeman by purporting to offer her help and with intent to Influence her testimony in an official proceeding in Fulton County, Georgia, concerning events 
at State Farm Arena in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia, said date being a material element of the offense, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 210F41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Stephen Cliffgard Lee with the offense of criminal. Attempt T.O. Commit Influencing Witnesses, OCGA Section 16-4-1 and 1610. 93-B-1-A, 1 for the said accused, in the County of Fulton and State of Georgia, on the 15th day of December 2020, unlawfully, with intent to commit the crime of influencing witnesses. OCGA L-6-93, B, L, A, Travel to the home of Ruby Freeman of Fulton County, Georgia, election worker, and knocked on her door, a substantial step toward the commission of influencing witnesses, OCGA October 16, 93, B, L, A, with intent to knowingly engage in misleading conduct toward Ruby Freeman by purporting to offer her help and with intent to Influence her testimony in an official proceeding in Fulton County, Georgia, concerning events. At State Farm Arena in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia, said date being a material element of the offense, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 220F41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do Charge and accuse Jeffrey Bossard Clark with the offense of criminal attempt. T.O. Commit false statements and writings, OCGA Section 16-4-1 and October 16, 20. For the said accused, individually and as a person concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia, on end. Between the 28th day of December 2020 and the 2nd day of January 2021, unlawfully, with intent to commit the crime of false statements and writings, OCGA Section 16-1020, knowingly, and willfully made a false writing and document knowing the same to contain the false statement, that the United States Department of Justice had identified significant concerns that may have impacted the outcome of the election in multiple states, including the state of Georgia, said. Statement being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies. And, on or about the 28th day of December 2020, the said accused sent an email T0. Acting United States Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen and Acting United States Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue and requested authorization to send said false writing and document to Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives David Ralston and President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate Butch Miller. And, on or about the second day of January 2021, the said accused met with Acting United. States Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen and Acting United States Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue and requested authorization to send said false writing and document to Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives David Ralston and President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate Butch Miller and said acts constituted substantial steps toward the commission of false statements and writings OCGA October 16, 20 and said conduct committed outside the state of Georgia, constituted an attempt to commit a crime within the state of Georgia, pursuant to OCGA L7. 2-1-B-2, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 23 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do. Charge and accuse Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani, Ray Stalling Smith. 3. And Robert David Cheeley with the offense of solicitation of violation. Of oath by public officer, OCGA Section 16 4 7 and 1610 1, for the said accused. Individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with. 
unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia on the 30th day 0F. December 2020, unlawfully solicited, requested, and importuned certain public officers then. Serving as elected members of the Georgia Senate and present at a Senate Judiciary. Subcommittee meeting, including unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is Known to the grand jury, Senators Brandon Beach, Bill Heath, William Legon, Michael Rett, and Blake Tillery, to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by Public Officer, OCGA Section 16-10-1, by unlawfully appointing presidential electors from the state of Georgia in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said persons as prescribed by law with intent that said persons engage in said conduct, said date being a material element of the offense, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity. Thereof, count 240F41, and the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do Charge and accuse Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani with the offense of false. Statements and writings, OCGA October 16, 20, for the said accused, in the county. Of Fulton and State of Georgia, on or about the 30th day of December 2020, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully made at least one of the following false statements and representations. To members of the Georgia Senate present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting. L. That Fulton County election workers fraudulently counted certain ballots as many as five times at State Farm Arena on November 3, 2020. 2. That 2,560 felons voted illegally in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. 3. That 10,315 dead people voted in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace and dignity thereof. Count 250F41 And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do Charge and accuse Ray Stalling Smith III with the offense of false statements. And writings, OCGA October 16, 20, for the said accused, in the county of Fulton and State of Georgia, on or about the 30th day of December 2020, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully made at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting. L. That Georgia Secretary of State General Counsel Ryan Germany stated that his office had sent letters to 8,000 people who voted illegally in the November 3, 2020 presidential election and told them not to vote in the January 5, 2021 runoff election. 2. That the Georgia Secretary of State admitted that they had a 90% accuracy rate in the November 3, 2020 presidential election and that there's still a 10% margin that's not accurate. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace and dignity thereof. Count 26 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Robert David Cheeley with the offense of false statements. And writings, OCGA October 16, 20, for the said accused, in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia, on or about the 30th day of December 2020, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully made at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting. L. That poll watchers and media at State Farm Arena were told late in the evening of November 3, 2020, that the vote count was being suspended until the next morning and to go home because of a major water main break, to 
that Fulton County election workers at State Farm Arena voted the same ballots over and over again on November 3, 2020. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace and dignity thereof. Count 27 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Donald J. Wife like Trump and John Charles Eastman with the offense of filing false documents, OCGA section 16-10-20.1, B, 1, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia, on or about the 3 LST. Day of December 2020, knowingly and unlawfully filed a document titled Verified. Complaint for Emergency Injunctive and Declaratory Relief in the Matter of Trump v. Kemp, Case 1, 20 CV 05310 MHC, in the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia, a court of the United States, having reason to know that said document contained at least one of the following materially false statements. L. That as many as 2,506 felons with an uncompleted sentence voted illegally in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. That at least 66,247 underage people voted illegally in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. 2. That at least 2,423 individuals voted illegally in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia who were not listed in the state's records as having been registered to vote. 3. That at least 1,043 individuals voted illegally in the November 3, 2020, presidential election who had illegally registered to vote using a postal office box as their habitation. 4. That as many as 10,315 or more dead people voted in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. That D. Eli B. Rate misinformation was used to instruct Republican poll watchers and members of the press to leave the premises for the night at approximately 10 p.m. on November 3, 2020 inch at State Farm Arena in Fulton County, Georgia. 6-0. Contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 28 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Donald John Trump and Mark Randall Meadows with the offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer, OCGA. Section 16-4-7 and 16-10-1 for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia on or about the second day of January 2021, unlawfully solicited, requested, and importuned Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, a public officer, to engage in Conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by public officer, OCGA L6. 10 to 1, by unlawfully altering, unlawfully adjusting, and otherwise unlawfully influencing the certified returns for presidential electors for the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia, in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said person as prescribed by law, with intent that said person engage in said conduct, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 29 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Donald John Trump with the offense of false statements and writings, OCGA October 16, 20, for the said accused, in the county of Fulton and State of Georgia, on or about the second day of January 2021, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully, 
made at least one of the following false statements and representations to Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, Georgia Deputy Secretary of State Jordan Fuchs, and Georgia Secretary of State General Counsel Ryan Germany. 1. That anywhere from 250,000 to 300,000 ballots were dropped mysteriously into the rolls. In the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. 2. That thousands of people attempted to vote in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia and were told they could not because a ballot had already been cast in. Their name. 3. That 4,502 people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia who were not on the voter registration list. 4. That 904 people voted in the November 3, 2020, presidential election in Georgia who were registered at an address that was a post office box. 5. That Ruby Freeman was a professional vote scammer and a known political operative. 6. That Ruby Freeman, her daughter, and others were responsible for fraudulently awarding at least 18,000 ballots to Joseph R. Biden at State Farm Arena in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. 7. That close to 5,000 dead people voted in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. 8. That 139% of people voted in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Detroit. 9. That 200,000 more votes were recorded than the number of people who voted in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Pennsylvania. 10. That thousands of dead people voted in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Michigan. LL. That Ruby Freeman stuffed the ballot boxes. 12. That hundreds of thousands of ballots had been dumped into Fulton County and another county adjacent to Fulton County in the November 3, 2020 presidential election. In Georgia, 13. That he won the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia by 400,000 votes. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments, and Agencies of State Government, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 31 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Stephen Cliffgard Lee, Harrison William Prescott, Floyd and Trevian C. Coody with the offense of influencing witnesses. OCGA Section 1610-93 B. 1. A. For the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia, on or about the fourth day of January 2021, knowingly and unlawfully, engaged in misleading conduct toward Ruby Freeman of Fulton County, Georgia, election worker, by stating that she needed protection and by purporting to offer her help with intent to influence her testimony in an official proceeding in Fulton County, Georgia, concerning events at State Farm Arena in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 33 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton with the offense of conspiracy to commit election fraud, OCGA sections 21-2-603 and 21-2-574 for the said accused individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia on and between the first day of December 2020 and the seventh day of January 2021 unlawfully conspired and agreed to cause certain members of the conspiracy who were not officers charged by law with the care of ballots and who were not persons entrusted by any such officer with the care of ballots for a Purpose required by law to possess official ballots outside of the polling place in the state of Georgia. 
and Sidney Catherine Powell entered into a contract with Sullivan Strickler. LLC in Fulton County, Georgia, delivered a payment to Sullivan Strickler LLC in Fulton County, Georgia, and caused employees of Sullivan Strickler LLC to travel from Fulton County, Georgia, to Coffee County, Georgia, for the purpose of causing certain members of the conspiracy who were not officers charged by law with the care of ballots and who were not persons entrusted by any such officer with the care of ballots for a purpose required by law to possess official ballots outside of the polling place, which were overt acts to effect the object of the conspiracy. And Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton aided, abetted, and encouraged employees of Sullivan Strickler LLC in accessing election equipment while inside the Coffee County Elections and Registration Office in Coffee. County, Georgia, for the purpose of causing certain members of the conspiracy who were not officers charged by law with the care of ballots and who were not persons entrusted by any such officer with the care of ballots for a purpose required by law to possess official ballots outside of the polling place, which were overt acts to effect the object of the conspiracy, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 3441. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton with the offense of conspiracy to commit computer theft, OCGA sections 16 4 8 and 16 9 93 A, for the said accused individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia on and between the first day of December 2020 and the seventh day of January 2021 unlawfully conspired to use a computer with knowledge that such use was without authority and with the intention of taking and appropriating information, data, and software, the property of Dominion Voting Systems Corporation. And Sidney Catherine Powell entered into a contract with Sullivan Strickler, LLC in Fulton County, Georgia, delivered a payment to Sullivan Strickler LLC in Fulton County, Georgia, and caused employees of Sullivan Strickler LLC to travel from Fulton County, Georgia to Coffee County, Georgia, for the purpose of using a computer with knowledge that such use was without authority and with the intention of taking and appropriating information, data, and software, the property of Dominion Voting Systems Corporation, which were overt acts to effect the object of the conspiracy, and Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty. Hampton aided, abetted, and encouraged employees of Sullivan Strickler LLC in using a computer with knowledge that such use was without authority and with the intention of taking and appropriating information, data, and software, the property of Dominion Voting Systems Corporation, while inside the Coffee County Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia, which were overt acts to effect the object of the conspiracy, contrary to the laws of SID. State, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 35 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latiam, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton with the offense of conspiracy to commit computer trespass, OCGA sections 16-4-8 and 16-9-93 B for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia on and between the LST. Day of December 2020 and the seventh day of January 2021 unlawfully conspired to use a computer with knowledge that such use was without authority and with the intention of removing voter data and Dominion Voting Systems Corporation data from said computer. And Sidney Catherine Powell entered into a contract with Sullivan Strickler, LLC in Fulton County, Georgia, delivered a payment to Sullivan Strickler LLC in Fulton County, 
Georgia, and caused employees of Sullivan Strickler LLC to travel from Fulton County, Georgia, to Coffee County, Georgia, for the purpose of using a computer with knowledge that such use was without authority and with the intention of removing voter data and Dominion voting. Systems Corporation data from said computer, which were overt acts to affect the object of the conspiracy. And Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton aided, abetted, and encouraged employees of Sullivan Strickler LLC in using a computer with knowledge that such use was without authority and with the intention of removing Voter data and Dominion Voting Systems Corporation data from said computer while inside the Coffee County Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia, which were overt. Acts to affect the object of the conspiracy, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order. Peace and dignity thereof. 93. Count 37 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do. Charge and accuse Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton with the offense of conspiracy to defraud the state, OCGA October 16, 21, for the said accused, individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime, and together with unindicted co-conspirators, in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia, on and between the first day of December 2020 and the seventh day of January 2021, unlawfully conspired and agreed to commit theft of voter data. Property which was under the control of Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, a state officer, in his official capacity. And Sidney Catherine Powell entered into a contract with Sullivan Strickler. LLC in Fulton County, Georgia, delivered a payment to Sullivan Strickler LLC in Fulton County. Georgia, and caused employees of Sullivan Strickler LLC to travel from Fulton County, Georgia, to Coffee County, Georgia, for the purpose of committing theft of voter data, property which was under the control of Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, a state officer, in his official capacity, which were overt acts to affect the object of the conspiracy, and Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty. Hampton aided, abetted, and encouraged employees of Sullivan Strickler LLC in accessing election equipment while inside the Coffee County Elections and Registration Office in Douglas, Georgia, for the purpose of committing theft of voter data, property which was under the control of Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, a state officer, in his official capacity, which were overt acts to affect the object of the conspiracy, contrary to the laws of said state, the good, order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 38 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Donald John Trump with the offense of solicitation of Violation of Oath by Public Officer, OCGA Section 16-4-7 and 16-10-1, for the said accused, in the County of Fulton and State of Georgia, on or about the 17th day of September 2021, unlawfully solicited, requested, and importuned Georgia Secretary of State. Brad Raffensperger, a public officer, to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of Violation of Oath by Public Officer, OCGA Section 16-101, by unlawfully decertifying the election, or whatever the correct legal remedy is, and announce the true winner, in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said person as prescribed by law, with intent that said person engage in said conduct, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 390F41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Donald John Trump with the offense of false statements and writings, OCGA October 16, 20, for the said accused, in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia, on or about the 17th day of September 2021, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully made the following false statement and representation to Georgia Secretary of State. Brad Raffensperger. 
L, as stated to you previously, the number of false and or irregular votes is far greater than needed to change the Georgia election result. Said statement being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace and dignity thereof, count 40 of 41, and the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse David Janey Schaefer with the offense of false statements. And writings, OCGA October 16th, 20, for the said accused, in the county of Fulton and State of Georgia, on or about the 25th day of April 2022, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully, made at least one of the following false statements and representations in the presence of Fulton. County District Attorney's Office Investigators 1. That he attended and convened the December 14, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, but that he did not call each of the individual members and notify them of the meeting or make any of the other preparations necessary for the meeting. 2. That a court reporter was not present at the December 14, 2020, meeting of Trump. Presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, a department and agency of the government of a county of this state, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Count 41 of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Robert David Cheely with the offense of perjury, OCGA. 16-10-70, A, for the said accused, in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia, on or about the 15th day of September 2022, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully made at least one of the following false statements before the Fulton County Special Purpose Grand Jury, a judicial proceeding, after having been administered a lawful oath. L, that he was unaware of the December L4, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector. Nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, until after the meeting had already taken place. That he had no substantive conversations with anyone concerning the December L4, 2020, meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, until after the meeting had already taken place. 2 that he never suggested to anyone that the Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia should meet on December L4, 2020. 3. That the only communication he had with John Eastman concerning the November 3, 2020, presidential election was for the purpose of connecting Eastman to Georgia Senator Brandon Beach and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury for possible legal representation. 4. That he never worked to connect John Eastman with any Georgia legislators other than Georgia Senator Brandon Beach and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury. 5. Said statements being material to the accused own involvement in the December L4, 2020. Meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, and to the accused. Communications with others involved in said meeting, the issues in question, contrary to the laws. Of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Fannie T. Willis, District Attorney. 97. Witness List Assistant, Chief INV, M. Hill FCDADA 14 Senior INV, T. Swanson Lucas FCDA DA 72. We sincerely appreciate your valuable time dedicated to viewing this content. For any feedback you may have, we kindly request you to reach out to us at contact at zoamadynews.com. We would be grateful if you could also consider connecting with us on social media platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. Additionally, we are pleased to inform you that our content is accessible on Roku and Amazon Fire TV by simply searching for CTN.
you can gain access to a plethora of videos and diverse content thoughtfully curated by our proficient team. Caribbean Television Network. It's about all of us.